I know you all want to see my beard, or maybe not. But I haven't done this on the channel, so we're going to talk about some printers. So let's take a look what I've got going on here. All right, so mainly printing with Ender 3. I'm going to show you something that I did today uh, and yesterday. So this is my stock Ender 3 minus the little extension there for the loop. So I wanted to do this last time I was putting one together. And that's the one that I just put together minus the mat, you can see. But I needed to steal that to do something else. So I took the parts out of the box. Again, already I am starting to scroll and talk about other stuff. So let's talk about this here. So look at the power supply. Yeah, baby Yoda, we know. Baby Yoda. Okay, so power supply. <laughs> you see the height here, right? See how close, I know this has been talked about. And the last time I put one of these together, I tried, I thought about just if this was over here, right? So I turned, this completely around but what they've done is they've done a relief Let's see if I can show it to you here it is here it is there so see that relief so if you turn that strut around 180 degrees then the head of this won't fit in so I realized when I was putting this one together that if you turn it around, right, same thing, but if you turn it and you flip it, it puts the power supply over. So now look, that bed can completely clear it. And I'll go around here. There's enough slack in that wire. You can see it's all nice. I'm gonna actually put another clip there. But this unit will now, no matter how you put this on, as long as you don't hit that back there, this thing is gonna stay out of the way. But on this one, you can see it's pretty close. And what we've had happen, that when you put this magnetic bed on, if you don't get it on there perfectly, is that it hits it 100%. Or, say you think you have it right, like that. It hits it a little bit there. So it's always one of those, let's get it on, let's get it on, but oh, it's too. Now look at that. That, what we've noticed is that if it's rubbing like that, it'll curl that mat up or down, and then it can start causing parts to lift or pop it out. So when I put this one together, I really wanted to, well, part of it was by accident, but I really wanted to see if I could clear that power supply. So it clears it, and you can see those aren't going to touch it. So that's good. The other thing I've been posting on Instagram, I don't know if any of you here follow me, but I've been doing some mods to these printers after getting used to them. I don't like to mod stuff when I first build it. So I want to make sure. Hey, Dukers. Say hi, Dukers. Okay. I don't like to mod it right away. So the first problem that we had was that when our room got cold, we started getting blockages uh, in the heat break. And the first one that I took apart was basically right at where the nozzle goes into the heat break, it goes into the, the heater, uh, there was a gap caused by a poorly cut piece of uh, PTFE tubing. So I thought, okay, well, I'm already going to upgrade. I'm going to fix that, so I'm going to upgrade PTFT tubings. And when I ordered that, a bunch of them came with new couplers. The other problem I had was is that these were getting weak. So what I thought about was is buying a couple of them, but every single kit came with extra stuff. So I found price-wise that for 20 bucks a printer, I could buy these sets where it was enough to do two printers of the Capricorn. It came with a nice square cutter. I then bought a big batch of these, the, the ones that hold better. And I also, Baby Yoda, bought these all metal upgraded extruder kits. Here, Penny, grab the other side, open that for me. Open this? Yep. If I can. You can do it. Ah. There you go. So, these kits, which a lot of you have seen on other posts, right? That whole piece is aluminum. That whole piece is aluminum. And you basically get new gears. Uh, 
coupler. It comes with the kit. I don't use that. So the upgraded couplers I bought were these ones. So you've got your extruder coupling, and it comes with a hot end coupling with already some anti-seize. And then these couplings come with one clip, but they don't come with both sides. So I 3D printed an assortment of those. I also then bought a whole new set of nozzles, which I've already noticed just compared to the Creality ones, they're a little bit better quality. So any of the, my printers that I've had in use, I've upgraded, put these nozzles on. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is printing all these basic little upgrades, which I'll show you. So I printed some of these, these little cable brackets. These are a necessity because when you put this extruder on, it doesn't have that cable clip. So I put these on here like that. And then I just got a bunch of M3 and M4 screws. The other thing I was printing, again, I said these little clips. Uh, this actually, this is one of these DeWalt, uh, it's Craftsman system uses the same dovetail parts bins. These little parts bin, or bit bins, you can print these dividers. Uh, the guy on Thingiverse, Benjamin Johnson, he's also on Instagram, Electron Smith, he designed these and they fit really well. So I've been able to use that, sort of keep my stuff organized this week, weekend while I'm doing this. But what I've been doing, as you can see on this one, I put all of these upgrades to use. So that holds the cable out of the way. <clears throat> I'm gonna test this guy out. I don't know how well I like this. I was given a little filing. So it's supposed to keep the filament from rubbing up against this lead screw, I believe is the right term. The other thing I printed was one of these. You can see this is supposed to roll, but I really don't, I don't know. I don't know how well it'll work, but it'll at least do the same as that. All of these have gotten, you can see, focus. Bit worn in, but it's better than it being right here and going straight down. So uh, the other upgrades I've done, you can see in there the clips. And then this, I think, is probably one of the favorite mods that I've got. This right here just screws on to the back of that Z-axis arm. That's what it looks like before you put it on. There's a couple different uh, mirrored images. But you put that on there and that keeps these cables out of the way. Which I haven't had this in a while, but I did have one where I poorly managed it like that. And I've had the cable catch up onto them. So I'm looking forward to upgrading all of them onto this. So where else have I done these? So those are those clips. And you can see one there, one there. Probably put one more there. And I also put one on the underside of that keep this one up so it doesn't catch so basically just general maintenance type upgrades all of the printers have had a few bit of hours printing pack out parts and I just wanted to give them some general maintenance I tighten up all my wheels clean out the fans this one's brand new minus the mat uh, level them I've got one uh, that's got a bow where the center is high so I'm gonna try the painter's tape on it. So I'll get that one put into use as my test printer. Oh, I think the other thing I printed on this one was I printed the little cover, which, I mean, whatever. You reach around and you grab that real quick, you touch it, it's never caused a problem, but at least it looks better. Well, who cares, I guess, really? But if you had something metal in your hands, then maybe that would be bad. So this one, all I gotta do is level. I think I'm gonna put the glass bed on it. And this one I gotta do the whole process on. So. I'll snap a couple things, show you what I'm doing while I'm doing it, hopefully. Uh, try to make this a nice 200 hour long video. No, I'm just kidding. You have a good one. Take it easy, guys. I take my squares cut end, it's gonna be in here, and I've already marked my nozzle, and then I backed it out one turn. I do the one full turn. I'm gonna drop it into the connector and seat it. And then this is another reason why I like using the aftermarket tool compared to the one and I'm going to just crank that down and I'm only going to use the tool finger tighten it and now this end here's a trick that I like to do I take a 
small round file and I put it in there and if you screw it'll sort of cinch itself down and then I screw, rotate it the opposite direction and what I do is I basically just give a little chamfer inside of there so that when I'm sliding my filament in this tube has a slight taper so that the, the tube, uh, the filament will go in here well. So that's part of my upgrades. I'll move on to some other ones in a second. All right, so this bracket is gonna take care of this mess. If you've ever had these get caught with this, it's nice and it's fun how your print job just gets ruined all of a sudden. So simple print, thingiverse, a couple of the extra screws from when I do extruder upgrades. You just cinch this down onto the z-axis. And it's nice because you don't have to buy screws and they match. Nothing like left-handed screwing. That sounds funny. I'm gonna cut that zip tie off. I'll have to redo it later. But what I do is I get my hot end cable and I put it in and I tuck it there in that part and then this flat ribbon cable comes up and you can see those will get held in place there and not flop back out. So then when I finish this whole unit, I will pop all these off and untangle that. So that's a simple upgrade, pretty close to free. If you have extra screws, it's simple. Okay, so moving on to the next upgrade. We're gonna change this extruder out. And as you see, and they don't talk about this when you buy the upgrade extruders, this hot end cable loom, wire loom, has a clip that's part of the bracket. And the new one does not. So, simple 3D printed part, of course. There we go. So, all we do is get a longer screw and put that in there. Uh -oh. So, simple. These are M3s. Pop those out, and we'll be right back. this upgraded extruder and it's all pretty looking so there we go all right hey guys um this is jake scroll here for jake of all he forgot to take this video yesterday and we got all of our 3d printers tuned up um and some of them are running and some of them have stopped obviously but uh wanted to point out that we bought new parts and lo and behold some of them weren't working properly so now we gotta take them all back apart um, and redo them but as you can see that some of them are back together and working and other ones aren't but we just wanted to give you a heads up and take this quick video for you and um, yeah we're gonna get back to printing thanks guys bye